Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Stuart Rhodes and the Oath Keepers? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, then I'll move to my analysis. Elmer Stewart Rhodes was born in California in 1966. He served as a paratrooper in the Army until he was severely injured in a parachute accident during a nighttime jump. He lost his left eye in 1993. He has never said what happened, but there's a rumor that he dropped a loaded handgun on the ground when he was functioning as a firearms instructor. It discharged and he was struck in the face with a bullet. This is pretty difficult to believe. Typically, stories about magically discharging guns occur in murder cases, but who knows? Maybe it happened that way. Rhodes attended the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He would graduate in 1998 before taking various jobs like working as a valet driver. He then went to Yale Law School and graduated in 2004. He clerked for a justice on the Arizona Supreme Court and eventually moved to Montana. Rhodes would be disbarred in December of 2015 after failing to respond to grievances filed against him in Arizona. Moving back to March of 2009, we see that Rhodes founded an organization he referred to as the Oath Keepers. This group is a far-right anti-government militia. Anyone can join the group, but they primarily target current and former military and law enforcement. The size of the Oath Keepers is not known, some sources indicate it could be between 1 and 5,000. The Oath Keepers say that the number is closer to 35,000. The group has inserted itself into a number of issues, showing up at various places around the country where there is some type of unrest or dispute. They typically choose events that are connected to their anti-government message. For example, members showed up to defend the Bundy family during the notorious 2014 standoff against the Bureau of Land Management. The Oath Keepers maintain a number of beliefs and policies. Here are just a few examples. The group believes that military and law enforcement personnel need to stand up against the government in order to defend the Constitution. The group wants these individuals to keep their oath in order to prevent tyranny, even if that means forming an armed rebellion. The group has concerns that the government will try to destroy gun rights and subjugate the population. They believe that government officials are conspiring to form a new world order. The group does not tolerate any type of discrimination based on race, religion, or nationality. They want to avoid the mistakes that other anti-government groups have made and not alienate potential members. Historically, the group has not been fans of Republicans or Democrats. They have a particular disdain for Barack Obama. The group's origins can actually be traced back to protesting Obama's election victory in 2008. Interestingly, the group does like Donald Trump. They became emboldened when he was elected. During the riot at the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, about 30 to 40 members of the Oath Keepers were present, including Stuart Rhodes. Some members entered the Capitol as part of the riot and were later arrested and charged with crimes like obstruction of Congress. Rhodes claimed that they were just there to provide security and they were never supposed to enter the Capitol. The members who entered the Capitol went totally off mission, according to Rhodes. After the riot, many anti-government groups noticed that Rhodes was not arrested. He was accused of being an FBI informant because the group members figured that was the only way he could avoid being charged. A few Oath Keeper chapters broke away from the group they decided to operate independently of Rhodes' leadership. In January 2022, Rhodes, along with 10 other members of the Oath Keepers, were charged with seditious conspiracy in connection with their behavior at the U.S. Capitol. I suppose the anti-government groups now owe Rhodes an apology. It looks like he was not an FBI informant after all. Seditious conspiracy is related to the use of violence to hinder the execution of federal law. It carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. 
Historically, this charge has been difficult to successfully prosecute. The government said that Rhodes and certain conspirators planned to stop the lawful transfer of presidential power, including by using force. The conspirators traveled across the country and entered Washington, D.C. while wearing tactical gear and possessing a number of weapons. Rhodes entered a restricted area of the Capitol grounds and directed others to meet him at the Capitol. According to the indictment, the members began planning the attack right after Biden won the election. On November 5, 2020, Rhodes posted a message on an invitation-only group which read, quote, We aren't getting through this without a civil war. Too late for that. Prepare your mind, body, and spirit, unquote. On December 25, he posted a message to a similar group indicating he doubted Congress would keep Trump in the White House. He went on to suggest that the only chance they had was to, quote, scare the blank out of them and convince them it will be torches and pitchforks time, unquote. His desperation was made clear on December 31 when he sent a message to Oath Keeper leaders proclaiming, quote, there is no standard political or legal way out of this, unquote. Some of the Oath Keepers who were charged with less serious crimes admitted that they left firearms in a hotel in Arlington, Virginia, in case they needed to activate what they referred to as a quick reaction force. Rhodes said in an interview that the quick reaction force was only if the president called them. Rhodes said he was worried that Antifa might try to storm the White House. So I guess this quick reaction force was supposed to respond to this threat by Antifa and push them out of the area. Rhodes believed that if Antifa attacked, the gun laws in Washington, D.C. would no longer apply to the Oath Keepers. They would have joined the military. Now moving to my analysis. I will offer my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me as interesting in this case. Item number one, Rhodes' estranged wife, Tasha Adams, has made a number of statements about her husband. For example, she said that he became increasingly radical in the years leading up to Obama becoming president. She called him dangerous and a complete sociopath. He believes he is the next George Washington. He lives very much in his own head, and he has made up his own mythology and sees himself as a figure in history. Item number two, Rhodes appears to believe that he's capable of beating the system, like he's being careful regarding the law. He once said, quote, I don't do illegal activities. I always stay on this side of the line. I know where the lines are, and it drives them crazy, unquote. I find this interesting because he belongs to a group whose ideology permits and encourages them to take extreme actions, including an armed rebellion. Yet Rhodes is proud of his ability to behave in a way that is barely within the law. I also find it intriguing that when he allegedly breaks the law, when he gets caught, he conveniently invokes a conspiracy theory and claims that he's being falsely accused. He can say something like, look, the conspiracy must be true. I'm being falsely accused. Rhodes once said at a rally, quote, I may go to jail soon, not for anything I actually did, but for made up crimes, unquote. Rhodes positions himself so that he can never lose. If the government does not arrest him, that's because he outsmarted them. If they do arrest him, that's because the government wants to silence his wisdom. Item number three, when Donald Trump first started running for president, the Oath Keepers did not appear to be big fans. That changed when Trump started talking about voter intimidation, massive fraud, and violent unrest. In that moment, as far as the group was concerned, he deviated away from major party politics. Trump was speaking about changing the system entirely, in a way like a revolution. It seems curious that a group that claims to defend the Constitution is okay with the idea of having their candidate win at all costs. The Oath Keepers' beliefs are about them getting their way, not about some noble ideology. They are not truly anti-government. They are anti-everyone else's government. They are pro-government if it promotes their ideology. This is a group that wants to dominate other people, not uphold the Constitution and maintain order. If they can win, even through a large political system like a strong federal government, they will take that victory. They don't need to have local government 
They just need, again, to get their way. This group is not sophisticated enough to get their way through a normal democratic process. Item number four, several of the Oath Keepers have now abandoned Trump. He is no longer their hero. They are mad at him because he did not pardon them for criminal offenses. This supports the idea that they knew they were committing a crime and they believed themselves to be supporting an insurrection. I think this also cements their distrust of politicians. Even Trump, who they saw as an ally, turned against them. Item number five, Rhodes and other Oath Keepers appear to have very poor critical thinking skills. They have proven themselves susceptible to even small amounts of misinformation and are highly vulnerable to conspiracy theories. Just to name a few conspiracy theories that they invest in, the New World Order, which I mentioned, the Deep State, large-scale illegal voting operations targeting the 2016 general election, and the 2020 stolen election conspiracy theories. They believe that Joe Biden is a puppet leader installed by the Chinese government. It's like they signed up for the right-wing conspiracy theory of the month club, and they keep renewing their subscription every year. The Oath Keepers have on occasion aligned with other conspiracy theorists. For example, the group teamed up with QAnon on at least one occasion, and Rhodes has been interviewed by Alex Jones. They share a number of conspiratorial beliefs. Moving to the last question, groups like the Oath Keepers have been around for a long time. Why did they become so dangerous at this point in history? It appears as though the Oath Keepers started out with beliefs that were unusual but they were not necessarily looking for an insurrection. In one sense, they were trying to embody the phrase, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. They had a distrust of the government and wanted to take precautions. But then something happened where this distrust was combined with drastic action. Now they were willing to act on these beliefs, and their beliefs became more extreme. Again, they kind of wandered into conspiracy theories. I think what happened here is that Donald Trump invoked the conspiracy theories. He was the first presidential candidate they had seen to embrace the extreme right. I think the lesson learned here is it's important to vigorously reject unsupported conspiracy theories. Not every conspiracy theory is false. It's fine to investigate conspiracies, but it's not prudent to believe in something without any concrete indication that it's true. Groups like the Oath Keepers are waiting on the sidelines at all times, eager to be activated by even the slightest level of interest in their paranoid beliefs. So if somebody looks at their paranoid thinking and they validate it to any extent, those individuals will take that very seriously. They will expand that into all types of other beliefs that are even more extreme. Their paranoia paints the world as a very hostile place, and they are willing to respond in accordance with that perceived level of threat. Those are my thoughts on Stuart Rhodes and the Oath Keepers. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.